Hello and welcome to the episode 336 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Among other things, today we have the Beatles discovering theatrical makeup, George Harrison losing his country gentleman, and John Lennon named Man of the Decade. On the 2nd of December 1961, the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best on drums, performed an evening concert at a Cavern Club in Liverpool. It was the 30th such gig in their career. One year later, in 1962, another evening appearance at the Cavern had been arranged, but Ray McFall, owner of the club, accepted to find substitutes to allow the Beatles to appear at the Embassy Cinema in Peterborough, on a Frank Highfield packaged bill. The band, now with Ringo Starr on drums, didn't impress the audience for once, having a bad night on both of their spots on the stage. Journalist Lyndon Whittaker, in a review of the event, wrote that the group frankly failed to excite me. The drummer apparently thought that his job was to lead, not to provide rhythm. He made far too much noise, and in their final number, Twist and Shout, it sounded as though everyone was trying to make more noise than the others. It was a setback, but the band used it to tighten the focus on their chops and learn something. This time, guitarist Ted Taylor, also on the bill with his Ted Taylor 4, introduced the lads to the merits of stage makeup. In 1963, the Beatles had two work engagements on the same day. From the late morning to the late afternoon, they were at the Elstree Studio Center in Borehamwood, where they filmed their appearance for the Morecambe and Wise Show, a very famous British comedy TV program. The show, called by Beatles historian Mark Lewison the finest comedy TV appearance featuring the Fabs, was aired on the 18th of April 1964, between 8.25 and 9 p.m. Apart from the comedy sketches, the band performed live This Boy, All My Loving and I Want to Hold Your Hand, plus a 44-second rendition of Moonlight Bay with hosts Harry Morecambe and Ernie Wise. You can watch the whole thing on Vimeo, the link is in the description. Quick, before they take it down again! Another thing in the description is the link to www.simonmas.com support, where you'll find a list of the things you can do to support this program. Nothing too complex, choose anything and make me happy. Oh, and Bongo too! Anyhow, later in the evening, the Beatles appeared at the charity event for the sufferers of cerebral palsy at the Grosvenor House Hotel in London playing live in front of an evening-dressed audience. The respectable audience didn't behave too well, though. Beatlesbible.com mentioned that they all rushed to the stage at the end of the show, sieging the Beatles like it happened with other, ruddier fans, with the difference that the Fabs didn't enjoy any protection this time. Not an enjoyable experience. On the 2nd of December 1964, Ringo Starr had his tonsils removed. As we appreciated during the previous two episodes, even this occasion was good for the media to bask in to get something Beatlesy to report. One year later, in 1965, accident struck. During the road trip to Glasgow, where the Beatles were supposed to start their 1965 British tour, George Harrison's Gretsch guitar was accidentally dropped from the car that was bringing them and their equipment to destination. The band's driver, Alf Bicknell, was stopped on the road by a lorry and told of what had happened. A strap tying the instrument to the car had broken down, and the guitar had been dropped at some point on the motorway. According to Bicknell, John Lennon threatened to sack him if they didn't find the guitar. So the car was brought back, and eventually, despite the darkness and the rain, 
the party found little bits of wood and a guitar string. Bicknell didn't lose his job, but you can bet there was no cheering nor pleasantries exchanged in that car. It was George Harrison's country gentleman to be lost that way. In 1966, during a 9 a.m. to 12 noon session at the EMI Studios, engineer Jeff Emerick completed the editing and the mono mixing of Pantomime, Everywhere is Christmas, the Beatles' Christmas message to their official fan club, recorded on the 25th of November, as we detailed in episode 329. Press officer Tony Barrow was listed as producer for the session, probably because he directed Emmerich during the editing of the disc. The master tape was rushed to Lintone Records for the production of the flexi discs to be sent to the fans. In 1967, the long, long, long editing work on the Magical Mystery Tour footage went on at Norman's Film Productions. Let's close this episode with three events happened on the 2nd of December 1969. For a start, John Lennon was nominated as Man of the Decade. What happened was that during the preparation of their program Man of the Decade, ATV had asked sociologist and anthropologist Desmond Morris, broadcaster Alistair Cook and writer Mary McCarthy to choose a person that could represent the 1960s. The idea was to hear about the choices and then shoot a short documentary with or about these people. Morris chose John Lennon, who was naturally delighted to figure on the program, along with John Fitzgerald Kennedy and Ho Chi Minh, respectively chosen by Cook and McCarthy. The bulk of the 20-minute documentary, filmed today at the Lennon's house in Tittenhurst, was an interview with John, also featuring Yoko Ono. The interview was interlaced with some archival material showing John Lennon with the Beatles or alone, chosen personally by John and Morris. Man of the Decade was aired on the 30th of December, between 10.30 and 11.30 pm. In the early afternoon, between 2.30 and 5.30 pm, a mixing session took place in Abbey Road, during which stereo mixes of Rain and Lady Madonna were completed for a compilation album that Capitol intended to release in the United States. A remix of Ringo's Octopus's Garden, erasing the Beatles' bass, piano and lead guitar track, was also completed. Ringo had to take part to a George Martin's TV special for Yorkshire Television, with a little help from my friends, and, to avoid an obvious breach of the infamous Musicians' Union miming ban, he needed a backup track that sounded fairly different from the released material. Finally, in the evening, George Harrison performed live with the Laney and Bunny at the Colson Hall in Bristol, as part of their backup band. It was George's first public performance since the Beatles had quit touring in 1966. As we've seen in yesterday's episode, he decided to take part to the band's package tour of the UK after seeing them live and talking with Eric Clapton, who was also playing in the backup band after the Blind Faith breakup. The tour played two concerts per night during the following six nights, with the musicians staying in local hotels and George enjoying some sort of anonymity for the first time since 1964. The dates were recorded and later released as the Lenny and Bonnie and Friends on tour with Eric Clapton. George Harrison appeared as Misterioso on the album credits. Sorry for my sore throat today, time to get some rest. Join me tomorrow for a big day for Beatles fans and other stories, of course. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.